All right, so now we're going to round off our little uh, look at motor development in children with metacognition processes, executive functions, and what's called DCD, Developmental Coordination Disorder. So, as we grow, uh, we start, like we saw before, we get um, more control, more development of the way we see ourselves and our behavior. So, metacognition refers to this kind of knowledge uh, of the own condition, cognition, okay, of own cognition and that control, okay, on the cognitive abilities. Okay, so activities like checking, planning, monitoring, testing, uh, evaluating, revising strategies, all these kind of higher level thinking. Executive functions is more of uh, the higher order activities like mental processes that underpin uh, behaviors of self-control. Okay. Okay. So um, under it's yeah the big word is self-control. So underpin acts of self-control, which is crazy, right? Before we were so dependent on parents, and then all of a sudden we we're able to self we can show self-control. So behavior initiating, modulation, attention, response inhibition. So like stopping ourselves before we're going to do something. Um, I'm going to say something. No, nah, I'm not going to say it anymore. Okay. This is very slow and it only matures in, our, in late adolescent. Okay. So what this does is develop awareness of their capabilities, whether it's motor development or cognitive. Either way, it, it becomes a problem um, at times that uh, kind of is escalating and it's like this crazy um, effect uh, of a snowball going okay, down the hill. What do I mean? Um, it kind of affects their preparedness to try activities that they experience that's beyond them. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kid at primary school and I, I start to f see that I'm a bit bad at catching, catching the ball. So what, this happen what happens is that I try to avoid those situations where I'll be playing ball. Okay, so it's almost it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, like we looked at in social psychology. Self-fulfilling. Okay, so children who perceive themselves as poor are more likely to avoid doing these activities, but it's doing these activities more and more that develops them in the first place, right? That's a problem. And that problem is called developmental coordination disorder or DCD. So because we're kind of poor at whatever task it is, it, our perception of our own behavior leads to a, just a complete avoidance of those tasks. It's also called developmental dyspraxia and it's about gross model controlled sequencing difficulties, fancy word for like uh, playing ball or whatever. Okay, Tasks that involve the entire body in sequence to achieve some sort of common behavior, like catching a ball, playing basketball or something, right? I'm not talking like uh, controllers for video games. Nah. It's kind of this entire bodily thing. And the problem is, is that it kind of persists with the school entry. So I, if I come in with little minor uh, motor problems, they become big problems as I avoid any practice. Okay, practice of ex-performance, and you get these pessimistic self-perceptions, um, and they just become even worse as they go over time. Uh, associated problems are kind of other motor problems, like fine control, like writing and stuff, uh, speech, okay? Also, uh, abnormal muscle tone, and that's just kind of like motor problems. Okay, poor bodily awareness. Or, uh, remember, like we looked before, with uh, poor kinesthesis. But 
but also it's comorbid, meaning or you guys know comorbid. That's when it's uh, at the same time. You have two things, two or more at the same time. It's quite prevalent. It's like five to nineteen percent of kids, and it's mostly guys. And it's like one in ten, maybe uh, Australians have it. And the the sad thing is that they don't grow out of it. Okay, so you get all these core morbid problems like learning difficulties and behavior problems, tension disorders like ADHD. Okay, so this is like being disruptive or something. Um, this is. Uh, Social problems could be something like um, rejection from peers, low self-esteem, everything kind of escalates. Treatment um, is kind of, there's two things we can do, task-oriented, so that means focusing on a specific skill. So if we know it's a catching thing, so we go out and um, we we play ball with him, okay, and we teach him how to do the catching thing or whatever, right? It's just a specific thing if we know it, but normally we don't. So process-oriented approach, identify the underlying process. Um, kind of the underlying deficit almost, and then you find out and you remediate it. Okay, so uh, I kind of identify the process first and then go for it, or task-oriented. So this means catch as opposed to um, process-oriented, where it would be like um, um, bringing my arms above my head. See, as a process. Bringing my arms around my head and then clenching my fists or something. That's a kind of a process that I would go to. Which process is deficient there? You don't know. And because it's so many different factors that all kind of go output to the same thing, we just don't know. Okay, so there's it's really, really hard finding an underlying process and deficit. Okay, it's really hard. And there's many hypotheses, but um, reason, we don't know we still don't know the basis of the problem. So even though we have heaps of, uh, a bunch of treatments, we don't know the actual program, the actual problem with it, and so we can't really say anything um, big and sweeping about it yet. All right, so this ends our look at motor development and, uh, and development of psychology in this course. Thanks. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.